Hi, if you're watching this video, then you're either taking a statistics course or looking for more information about statistics. So what is statistics? And is it complicated? And I'm here to tell you that no. It's very easy to understand, it's very easy to interpret, and all you have to do is thoroughly understand the material by simplifying. When you took a look at your textbook, you might get overwhelmed by all the information. So simplify it. And generally you don't have to do that because I did it for you in this video and the videos to come. So I'm here to tell you that you can get an A plus or any mark you want in stats. All you have to do is simplify. So what is statistics? Statistics is a way to get information from data. That's it. So you're thinking, well if that's all it is, why is my textbook so large? Your textbook is large because there's so many ways to get information from data. And just be happy that you only have to work with one textbook. There are some statisticians out there who work with many. So <laughs> they have to simplify a lot of information, which takes a longer time. But ultimately, it's very easy to understand. The specific definition of stats is the mathematics of the collection, organization, and interpretation of numerical data. The second half of the definition, don't worry about it right now, we'll describe it later on in the video. So statistics branches off into two main groups. The first is descriptive statistics. The second is inferential statistics. So let's describe the first. Descriptive statistics means to describe. The key word is describe, a phenomena, a phenomenon. I don't know how to say that word. Summary and presentation of data. And what this means is, well, what, is, what does it mean when someone, summary, someone presents a summary and presentation? Well, think about it. When someone's up there at some sort of a conference presenting, they have charts and they have pie charts and they have bar charts and they have all these different visual understandings of the material. And that's what it means for descriptive statistics. Inferential statistics, on the other hand, is to draw conclusions making statements or predictions about the population based on statistical information. So let's talk about population. Population is a group of all objects or individuals of interest. For example, all objects of interest can be all the students at the University of Toronto, all the students at the University of York, all the cats in Canada. These are all examples of population. A sample would be only the cats in Toronto, only the cats in New York, which is a subset of the population. So that's all those that's all it really is for those two terms. So parameters and statistics. We generally we can say that populations are described by parameters. Samples are described by statistics. And what does it mean? What, it, well, well, what does it mean for a parameter? For example, parameter, the average hair length of all domestic cats, reflects the true value of the population. Statistics, the average hair length of cats in my sample. It's an estimate. So statistical inference is then the pop process of drawing a conclusion about the population based on the sample with certain levels of confidence and significance. I'll give you an example. All the ramen in Japan. What I mean by ramen is all the stores in Japan that sell ramen. So if I wanted to know if all the ramen in Japan were amazing ramen, or did they, did they differentiate? Was one better than the other? And how am I going to figure that out? So I'm going to take a sample. I'm going to either using, uh, we're going to talk about how we pick a sample later on. I'm going to pick that sample and through the sample, if the sample comes out that all ramen are amazing, I then make an inference that all ramen in Japan are amazing. And that's what it means. It's the process of drawing a conclusion about the population based on the sample. We'll talk about confidence and significance later on. So, a variable. A variable is the characteristics of a population or sample. And this is very different from a parameter. Populations are described by parameters. There's a difference in that. 
A variable is the characteristics of a population or sample, whereas parameter only refers to population. And an example of this is student grades, height, income, etc. Variables have values. And this is very important because student grades, for example, can, we'll use this as an example, student grades 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to 100, 100 being the highest. So the value is then a numerical, numerical representation. And what this means is the value is a number. It has to be a number to describe a variable. In data is the observed values of variables. The example given here is student marks. So someone could have gotten a 67, someone beside them a 73, I would have gotten a 71, someone over there an 83, someone in the front a 93, etc, etc. So they're basically, if you've ever seen digital rain, that's how you have to interpret data. Data kind of looks like that. They're the observed values of variables. And that's really all it is. Now, how do we obtain the data? Is it hard? No, it's not hard. It's very easy to do. And there's two ways we can do it. We can directly collect the data, which means we can do it. And this is called primary data. That means, well, it's, it's very... It's a self-definition, primary data. It's, it's primary. It's the first form of data that's collected. So it's primary, and that's why it's called primary data. The second way is we can use the data collected by others. For example, Statistics Canada or our market research companies. This is called secondary data. And there's just two ways, and that's really all it is. Now they branch off, and let's start with the first. How do we collect primary data? There's three ways to do it by observation, by experiment, or by survey. An example of observation is if I wanted to know how many students at the University of Toronto wore blue shirts. Now I would sit in one of the halls and I would observe with my eyes all of the blue shirts and I would write certain things down. Or I could do it by experiment. I can experiment by getting large amounts of resources and this gets more expensive. Or I can do it by survey. I can send out forms and if you wear a blue shirt, you sign the form. Now, all of these is the difference in, in gen is generally in the amount of control. So the difference is generally in the amount of control exercised by the researcher and the strength of the inference that can be made. So if all I did was sit and observe in some hall, in some university, who wore a blue shirt, is that enough to make an inference on the entire population? Probably not. I would probably have to take a much more thorough examination. And this is what it means by the amount of control. So that's primary data. And decisions involving, involved in sampling. So, sample population, sample size, and sample method. Sample population. From which population do we sample? Why is this important? What do we have to consider? So you have to ask yourself these questions when you're thinking about making a sample or analyzing a question with the population. Sample size. How large should the sample be? Should it be really large? Well, that takes more money. Should it be small, but then if it's too small, we can't make a, 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 you know, the inference won't be as strong to the population. The sampling method, how should we pick the sample out of the population? There's so many ways. And it can depend on many things. So the size of the population, the sample size will increase with the population size. Now, I advise you to write these things down. Because the four that I'm going to mention now are very important in understanding what population and the relationship between population and sample. So the sample size will increase with the population size. What that means is, if the population increases, as shown in the diagram, by the second large circle, what also increases? The sample. 
the variation in the population. A variation can be high class, middle class, and poor and low class. And what that means is that if there's too much high class people in one in an entire population, we have to consider well this population and the sample we take out of it might be biased. So if the variation changes, we have to change the size of the population. So we're going to have to make sure that there's an adequate amount of everything in there. So the sample size will increase with the variation. The third, the amount of error that can be tolerated. And this is, gets very confusing for some students, but don't worry, it's very easy to understand. The amount of error that can be tolerated in a sample and population size, in a sample size, I'm sorry. The sample size will decrease with the accepted error. So what does that mean? The sample size will decrease with the accepted error. What that means is, the more mistakes there are in a sample, the smaller it's going to get. The amount of resource available, and this is the last one, the amount of resource available, the sample size will increase. Because you got to think about it. If I have more money to spend on making sure my sample is accurate to the population, I'm probably going to spend that money. And that's what it means for resource. Do you have your research team? Do you have your the professionals who will be out there speaking to people, surveying others? That's what it means. So how do we create the sample?